Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video about the Apprentice S15E ready to fly airplane, we're going to install the tail. Now, I got the two tail pieces. If there's any tape or anything on, be sure to remove them. Uh, the vertical stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer. And in this bag of goodies that came with the airplane, there's a smaller little bag in here with some screws in it. Actually, it's a bag within a bag within a bag. Um, so down here is a small bag with three screws and one, two, three, four, five um, clevis keepers. They're silicone tubes that are used here on the clevis to hold the clevis uh, in place. Those are all extras. So, uh, in fact, of the three screws, two of those are extras. So I'm only going to get out two screws and put all the clevis keepers back in. So the bag will then contain one spare screw and I've got five clevis keepers here. Okay, and I'll just put that back in this big bag. So now the, the uh, next thing is to find a uh, screwdriver that will um, fit through the hole in the bottom of the airplane. Okay, I'm gonna turn the airplane over a minute. And you got a little plastic piece here and the size of the screwdriver, it's gonna be a Phillips screwdriver, is limited. These screws are uh, good screwdriver, um, good Phillips screwdriver, Phillips screw heads, but Sometimes these tiny screwdrivers don't work very well. Okay, they slip too easily. Okay, that that actually wiggles back and forth too much. So you can sometimes find this kind of a screwdriver that will first make sure it fits in the hole all the way down. Okay, and that it fits the head of the screw, which it does, and it'll make it easy to turn. One of the things about these, they're slightly blunter. There's that, those, that's blunt and makes it easier for the screw to grab a hold of, okay? So now what I'm going to do is turn this right back up. And the next thing I do is assemble this outside, not on the airplane first, so that you can make sure that this goes all the way down so that the vertical stabilizer is all the way down on the horizontal stapler like stabilizer like that okay then making sure that the two push rods stay on the top by the way red is on the top that's the bottom um, so make sure that the two push rods are on top and then push this down in carefully and all the way in. And that, that didn't go in all the way. Okay. There we go. Now you got to make sure this gets all the way down. And there we go. It sort of snaps down in and this front part of the vertical stabilizer here should be down in that recess. Doesn't have to be all the way down but just so it doesn't move side to side much. Okay. Now that that's down in I'm going to take my best screwdriver I've got. I'm going to put a screw on it and put it up the hole here. holding the top in place, start that screw. I'm just going to start it. Okay, screw didn't fall out so it started. Uh, I'm going to start the back screw. And again, I'm going to make sure this is down nice and tight. Start the screw in the back. Holding this tight, 
Starts the back screw. Now, how tight do you make it? The book says, install the screw screws, tighten the screws, but do not break the plastic. Okay, that's an interesting, how do you do, how do you do that? All right, I'm going to turn this upside down so I can feel it better. And I can also look to see how tight this is against the fuselage. So I think these screws can be a little tighter. I'm going to go a little bit more than finger tight. That feels pretty good. This one can go a little bit more. And good. So a little bit more than finger tight, but don't wrench it down. No, well, that one didn't go in enough, okay? Because this fell out. So, obviously I didn't get this one in enough. Because if you can do this and pull that down a little bit, it's not enough. So, I'm going to hold this up like that. And screw it in. Some more. I can see that as I'm pushing it down, I am I'm pushing down on the screw, and this is pushing this out the bottom. So that's going to tell me when I'm tight, is because when this thing bottoms out. Okay. So let's see if that's tight enough. All right, I can't move that any tighter, but I'm gonna go another quarter turn here. All right, get back down in there. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna see if this is loose at all. Okay, yep, it's still a little loose. So guess what? I'm gonna tighten that more. Okay, now will that move out? Just a, probably another turn. That one's good. Let me try this one just a hair more. That's good. So now, if I push on the bottom of this just enough, now well, that one's not tight enough either. Okay. So I was able to push the horizontal stabilizer away from the fuselage. So it needs a bit more. Okay, now that's not moving, that's not moving. I don't force it hard, but as long as it's good and tight, the important thing is that this is down flat so that the so that this horizontal stabilizer, if you tug on the end, is not it's gonna wiggle a little bit, but not much. So that's good and tight. Alright. Now that that's in place. We put on the two clevises. Okay. So um, the clevis has this silicone tube on it, so you have to slide it back so you can open the clevis. Now be careful not to move the um, push rod. Uh, so you don't move the servos. Servos are centered, okay? Now I'll be right back and get a small tool I use. So 
So it's easier to adjust a clevis when you have two things. One is a nice pair of needle nose pliers that has um, a bit of a serration on it, make it easier to hold. And this is called a four in one tool. It's sold by Tower Hobbies. And uh, this small piece here will hold a clevis and make it easier to turn. Okay. So now these are centered and I'm going to center the rudder and see how well the clevis, let me turn this around so you can see it better. Okay. So I'm going to hold the clevis. I'm going to have to move this a little closer to me. Okay. So I'm going to hold the clevis and hold this centered. Okay. And bring the clevis over and see. First off, the clevis isn't straight. I want it straight up and down. So I'm going to grab the push rod, hold it with my needle nose, and use my clevis turning tool here to turn it so that it's vertical. Okay. So now that the clevis pin is vertical, can go in the hole, I'm going to. I've got to sight this. Okay, I'm, I'm sighting down this right here and making sure that's nice and straight. And I can see that the clevis won't line up straight. Okay, so that means a couple of things. Um, one is that the um, servo is centered, which is what I want meaning I have to screw this in, screw this clevis in about three turns. Okay. And again, using my, turn here so you can see what I'm doing. I use my clevis turning tool here. I'm going to turn it toward the front of the aircraft, screwing it inward. About three turns, leaving it vertical, and see if that's enough. All right, that's about right. So now I'm going to use a a uh, flat bladed screwdriver to open the clevis. And I like my clevis pins, first off, to be in the first hole to begin with. Okay. And now comes the proof. So that's straight. Yep, good. Okay. So that clevis is straight. And now that that's straight, I'm going to move the, the um, small white um, silicon tubing clevis keeper so that that clevis keeper is, is not touching the control horn here. So there's a bit of a gap there, but it's far enough forward that that clevis is not going to come out. Plus the clevis pin uh, locks into the bottom part of the clevis. And that looks good. So we've got it straight. And yep, nice and straight. And now the last thing to do here is to turn this up like that. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn it around like this. So I can do the same thing with the elevator. Now with the elevator I have found, um, I put this together a week or so ago for a friend of mine. Um, and uh, so I'm familiar with putting these things together. Uh, I've actually put several of these together for students. Um, but I did one uh, not too long ago. And um, I found that this um, elevator needs to be slightly up. Okay. I know that the elevator uh, servo is centered. But I can see that this clevis um, needs to be turned in at probably about four turns. So I'm going to hold it with a... Um,
with the needle nose pliers using my clevis tool I'm going to turn it in one two three four leaving it horizontal and let's see how that looks uh, too much I'm going to back it out a full turn Try that. Yeah, that's right. All right, so I'm going to use my screwdriver, open the clevis, sometimes you just use your thumbnail, that worked for me. Make sure it's all the way in, make sure it locks in before I lock it in place. Nope, it still needs to go toward the front some more because this elevator is down and you don't really want it down. If anything, you want it level or up. Okay. Clevis tool turning it in a half, one, I'll go one and a half. I am putting this on the outer part of the hole. Okay, making sure the clevis is closed nice and tight. That's level. I like that. So I got the, um, this is level and flat here. One way you can test that is to take a ruler, put it up there, and see if it's level. And we're no level, it's not. I need another probably half a turn. So, one more time. Open it up. Tell you what, I'm going to go an extra turn. One whole turn over. We'll see how that works. Half, one turn. Put the clevis back on. Okay, take my ruler. Hold it up. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. So, um, if you can hold a ruler across and the back here is far enough in, and let me try that again. Alright. Now, I want it one more. I want it one more. Here's where the clevis tool comes in handy because it makes it so much easier to turn exactly one and another half. Okay. Now each airplane is going to be different, so my airplane needed probably more adjustment than yours, but we'll find out what point this is going to work. Oh yeah, now we're good. Now that ruler is straight across. Perfect. Okay. So now that's straight across. I'm going to move the clevis keeper, the silicone tubing back up, but don't let it touch the control horn. And we're set. Okay, so that's a lot to do. It took us, what, uh, about 18 minutes to do that. But uh, you have to sit and fiddle with it to um, uh, get it where you want it. Get it in nice and tight, but not too tight that you break it. This shouldn't move up and down. Uh, shouldn't move back and forth anyways. Okay, one more point. Um, after uh, I got the tail in place, I turned the radio on. I didn't put the wing on, uh, but then I plugged it in and turned the uh, airplane on so that you can see the rudder is moving okay. and that's low rate high rate low rate and the nose is steering is moving i did have to move the clevis so that this was nice and straight when the um rudder is straight so get the rudder straight um you and I, I already noted that I was probably gonna have to move this, so I moved that clevis to make that straight so that now the nose is nice and straight when the rudder is straight and the elevator is fine. Um, that's a lot of throw on the elevator, uh, maybe too much, we'll see. Um, 
Uh, you can't change it. It's got the fixed low and high rates. We'll change that when I switch to a different radio. We'll see how it goes. All right. Um, so after you get the tail on, make sure everything's straight by turning the radio back on, turn the airplane back on without the prop, obviously. And um, uh, then you know everything is good to go. It's going to be very important that this is nice and flat and that's nice and straight and that's nice and straight so that your first takeoff will be good. Thanks for watching.